Welcome to the uh, fourth Wednesday night in Lent as we continue this season of hope and our Lenten series on communications and community. We begin with prayer. Mender of division, you sent Christ to heal the world and to gather those on the margins. Bring your healing power to us. May we extend your power and grace to those separated from their communities and those longing for a tangible sign of your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let us pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Gospel according to St. Mark, the fifth chapter. Jesus and the disciples came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes. And when he had stepped out of the boat, immediately a man out of the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. He lived among the tombs, and no one could restrain him anymore, even with a chain. For he had often been restrained with shackles and chains, But the chains he wrenched apart, and the shackles he broke into pieces, and no one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains he was always howling and bruising himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and bowed down before him, and he shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he had said to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? He replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. He begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now there on the hillside, a great herd of swine was feeding. And the unclean spirits begged him, send us into the swine, let us enter them. So he gave them permission. And the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine. And the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank and into the sea and were drowned in the sea. The swineherds ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came to see what it was that had happened. They came to Jesus and saw the demoniac sitting there, clothed and in his right mind, the very man who had had the legion. And they were afraid. Those who had seen what had happened to the demoniac and to the swine reported it. Then they began to beg Jesus to leave their neighborhood. And as he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed by demons begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus refused and said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and what mercy he has shown you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him, and everyone was amazed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
Well, Jesus ends up in the strangest places. And this story is one of the strangest. He's in a cemetery of all places, which is one of the last places a self-respecting, purity-keeping Jew should be. And not just any cemetery, mind you. A cemetery on the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which means he's among the Gentiles, the non-Jewish people. Or I should say he's in a Gentile cemetery. It couldn't get any worse than that until it actually does get worse. For as soon as Jesus is on the shore, he's greeted by a man possessed by thousands of demons, a whole legion of them. This is the epitome of down and out, beyond civilization. Running around like a wild crazy man among the tombs of the dead. Like I said, no place for a self-respecting, purity-keeping Jew. In some ways, this sums up much of Jesus' ministry. He's always pushing the boundaries, crossing the lines, breaking the rules, testing the customs. Let's face it, Jesus goes where he shouldn't, interacts with those he should avoid, touches the untouchables, and tears, da tears down the very fabric of polite society. But that's Jesus for you. He just doesn't seem to know any better. According to Jesus, not only can anyone be considered someone that God loves, but Jesus just plain seems to set out to prove it. Even when everyone else with an ounce of sense, according to the standards of the day, would know to just steer clear of any possible contact with the likes of a demoniac running around practically naked among the tombs in a Gentile cemetery. But again, that's Jesus for you. So the question I ask is where does the church fit into this story? Where does the church fit into this story? When we realize all the places that Jesus showed up, like the tombs in a Gentile or non-Jewish territory, encountering a man possessed by many unclean spirits, well, we realize that Jesus wouldn't be confined to our church building. Jesus would be in places around town that many of us probably do not go or wouldn't be found. In fact, most congregations work on plans and strategies that try to get people to come to our church buildings, that try to get people to come inside and do things here the way we do them. And we even sometimes try to include and reach out to those who are down and out and invite them to come to our church buildings. We want to bring them in from the marginal places, to bring them in from the fringes of society. We want to have them come to us and into our church building. Whereas this story tells us, like so many other stories, Jesus went out to them. Jesus went to the fringes out to the marginal areas, Jesus went to meet them where they were. In a way, our congregation has had a whole year of study and what it means for the church, that is the congregational members, to leave the building. You had to learn that you can be involved in ministry and serving your neighbor by actually being a neighbor and serving your neighbors, that is the people who live right next door to you, the people who are in your sphere of influence, wherever you are. But there's a story that a pastor tells about his congregation. And it started out in the suburbs outside of San Antonio, Texas. It was a Lutheran congregation but something had happened and they had moved their church to downtown San Antonio. 
He then tells how his congregation was led by a man named Carlos to lead them out of the building to the homeless people living under the freeway bridge. Carlos had shown up for worship one Sunday. He sang out with praise, raising his hands to the Lord. He fell to his knees and wept during the prayers. He came forward for communion and after receiving the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, he literally lay prostrate on the floor, sobbing as he prayed. The story is that he had been addicted to cocaine for 20 years. He was near death as he lay in his own urine as a homeless man. But then he had had a vision of the Lord and he was delivered from his addiction. And for the last six months, he had never turned back. And then he had shown up in this Lutheran congregation in downtown San Antonio. Well, then Carlos asked if some from the church might get together on Saturday morning and take some hot chocolate to a downtown bridge where he used to live. There were many homeless people there who would appreciate a cup of hot chocolate, he said. And so a half dozen church members did just that. Now, the congregation had already learned that the y'all come approach to church doesn't work. The people, like those living under the bridge, were not going to walk into a church building. So starting with hot chocolate and prayer, once a month on a Saturday morning, they took church to people. After six months, they added food and clothing. The pastor said, we eventually started to take communion under the bridge and were surprised at how many homeless people hungered to receive it. As I placed the bread into hands, the true presence of Christ became more real to me than ever before. I wept the first time I saw our modern-day lepers lining up to partake of the Lord's table, the pastor said. I started to get a taste of why the Lord called us to the inner city. Well, after nine months, one of the leaders of the congregation asked why they never baptized people under the bridge. Couldn't we invite people to surrender to Jesus right there and be baptized? So the next week, the pastor stumbled through a message inviting people to surrender their lives to Jesus, the one who had been relentless in pursuit of them and many lined up to repent of their sins and to be cleansed with the waters of holy baptism, to be received as children of God. Well, since baptism is not an ending, but a beginning, they offered to pick up these new Christians and bring them to church the next morning for worship. And all the people agreed with big smiles on their faces. But the next morning, they were no-shows. Finally, one of the leaders asked that if they couldn't come to their church, why not take the church to them? So the next Saturday, they brought a small altar, a baptismal font, a band, and they had worship under the noisy freeway. And today, it is still known as the church under the bridge. It's not a typical church. And yet when we read story after story of what Jesus did, well, preacher Will Willimon says this of Jesus, how Jesus continually wades out into the swirling vortex of raw human need and pain. Well, it seems that this atypical church of taking the church to people living under the freeway bridge is more in line with what Jesus did than most congregations. Jesus continually moves into the fringes, to the margins, to the margins of society to reach out with healing 
and hope and transformation. This gospel story ends with the people begging Jesus to go away. Although Jesus left that place, the power of God did not leave. God's power remained and continued to be at work because the man continued to declare the works of the Lord. The man was commissioned to tell, to tell what the Lord had done for him. He would be the witness to the reign of God among his own people, even though they were a people still seized with fear, held in their own bondage, held by their own chains. But the power of God continued to be revealed through the man who told what God had done for him through Jesus Christ. Whenever and wherever we tell what God has done, whenever and wherever we share the stories of Jesus Christ, the power of God is at work and it overcomes all the forces that defy God and defy the ways of God. Keep telling the stories. God's power is revealed in the stories. Keep telling the stories of the power of God. Keep living the mission wherever you are. And know that Jesus is already ahead of you, showing up in the strangest places. Because, well, that's Jesus for you. Thanks be to God. Amen. The creator who fashions us together with all things, the Christ who leads us into a new and beloved community, the spirit who holds us in the communion of saints, one God, bless you now and always. Amen. Go in peace. Join together in Christ. Thanks be to God.